He has seen this photograph for the first time and he has never seen this girl. Hey, box is coming up. No. Here's my wife. Yeah. Yeah. You're sure? Yeah. <laughs> How much is uh, one photo? Reversing roles, Steve finds himself on the other side of the camera. I've watched these photographers work on the street in Peshawar and it just amazes me. It's sort of like a equivalent of a Polaroid camera. They reach into this box and they pull out a black and white photograph. Oh, that's great. Look at this. Oh, that's wonderful. Whoa, that's great. We have an appointment with the elders. I hope that they can give me some information about maybe where she is living now. Elders are tribal leaders who serve as the patriarchs of an extended family. They know the comings and goings of all the people in their community. Uh, Haji Farooq says, for the last three days, I have been looking for this girl. Mm -hmm. He's one of the elders in the camp, yeah. Fida Muhammad. Fida Muhammad. And he's going to help us. Let us give him uh, this. Steve has been working in Pakistan for 24 years. With each visit, he always finds time to catch up with his old friend, Salam. Well, you wonder where I was? Yeah. I saw, in fact, I wanted to call you when I saw you uh, on National Geographic. What was that? That was about, good four or five months back. No kidding. In Singapore you were, or you were in some place like there, and you know. You mean on, it was on uh, in the magazine? Or? No, no, it was on the television. On oh, the television, I see. You okay. were alive. Yeah. <laughs> and I was telling my kids, you know, my son, in fact, you know, that is Steve, I know him. Is that, yeah. In fact, the other way, I was talking to some Germans, because everybody's taking that photograph. Which photograph is that? The, the cover of the National Geographic. Oh, right, right. And people are mad about it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we're, uh, I'm back here uh, on this trip uh, looking for her. <laughs> While investigating, Steve cannot resist the temptation of looking through his lens. He's found a young girl with striking eyes who reminds him of the anonymous girl from his past. I like just to discover things around me, and I like to look for people who I think have an interesting story to tell on their face. I want to just try and understand who they really are. So I'll often take them off the road or off the sidewalk into a shaded place so that I can really look into their eyes. I want their eyes to be open and relaxed. In fact, I want their face to be relaxed. I want them to be at ease, and I want the story, their story, to be revealed in their face. It was a fleeting moment just like this that created the timeless image of the Afghan girl. Back at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, Glenn Miller is aging Steve's original photograph. What I'm doing here, I'm experimenting with lowering the eyelids slightly to give it a more mature look, in my opinion, with uh, shadowing here with some uh, darkness under the eyes. Here I'm adding weathering to the skin as a result of damage from the sun. Glenn changes the original lips to what they might look like today. You have to keep experimenting with various tools until you arrive at something that you're satisfied with. What I'm doing now is morphing from the original picture into my final age-progressed image. Back in Peshawar, Steve receives good news. The teacher has been found. This is really an exciting moment because finally, after 16 years, I'm gonna be able to find out what happened to that young girl. Uh, perhaps she's back in Afghanistan, maybe she's married, maybe she has a family. Can't wait to find out what, what her fate was. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? <laughs> After 17 oh, years, you. 
Steve is standing face to face with the teacher who allowed him in the tent school that day. In 1984, I was wandering through Nasser Ba camp and there was a, there was a tent. And uh, I remember you being the teacher and I was thinking the best chance to locate this young refugee girl would be to find you. I wanted to show you the picture of this girl and uh, see if you can remember her face. As She's willing to help, but she must have seen thousands of faces through the years. Did, does she remember yes, this girl? The girl yes. She does. Okay. Uh, a teacher is offering to take us to the school. The school is still there. She, she recognizes the girl's face, but has no idea where to find her. I asked her if they will be having a record of that uh, period. Okay. And she said it's possible. Please. Maybe she will show us the record. Okay. Together, they returned to the very spot where they both met yeah. the Afghan girl. This is the same school where I photographed that young refugee girl in 1984. Uh, it was a tent at that time, and now it's the proper school with classrooms and blackboards. We're going to look and see if we can find the records, see if we can find her whereabouts. Steve enters a secret world. A rare look into innocent faces. Each has the desire to improve her young life, to lessen the odds of an uncertain future. Yet half these girls will not complete their education. Some will not survive to become women. But despite their desperate circumstances, they have hope. For Afghan refugees, education promises a better life. I cannot bear the suffering of my people. We have lost two generations. What will happen to us and our children with no education and no future? I've cried so much, I've damaged my eyes. It breaks my heart. Who are these people? Uh? From inside a classroom, a clue emerges. That girl says that I know her. This girl was at the same school, she says. This girl okay. was at the same school, but she was very small at that time. Yeah. And uh, she says that I know the family. The girl and the teacher agree to help Steve find the family. Rumor has it the girl has moved away but a relative is still in the area. In Nasir Ba camp, there are few phones or addresses. It's such a maze that only the people who live here know their way around. The girl takes the teacher from house to house, searching for any information that may help them find a family member. Eventually, they discover it's the mother who lives nearby. As she approaches, she's suspicious of the large group of people searching for her. But when she's shown the picture, she recognizes the girl in the photo. This woman we met in the camp is saying the girl in the picture is her daughter. We've gotten four different names today and four different leads. But I think this is the best one. Her daughter's name, she's saying, is Alam Bibi. It means girl of the world. It couldn't be a more perfect name for this girl who has represented the plight of the Afghan people for the past 20 years. That's all that. That's all that. I asked him, who is she? And he said, it's my mother. Oh, right. That's amazing. Yeah. 
I gave it to him to show it to his mother. So soon we'll find out yeah. if she's the Actually, same girl. I, uh, I, there's a, about a square inch crack in the door and I actually saw her through the door. And I, if, if that's not her, it's, uh, it, it, it would be some kind of a miracle because uh, through the door I saw her. Yeah. The teacher says yeah. that I have now met her and she remembers me. She yeah. told me that you were my teacher. Right. One problem, she was a bit scared, her husband she, is at work did, did and without his permission, no man may see her unless he's family. Oh, this is um, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, we have to wait until tomorrow, huh? <laughs> oh, jeez. I know that you want to do it today, just now. And there is, uh, it's so near, I know. and yet so far. It's 10 feet. 10 feet. She's just there. She's I just can there still see her. The, she was just behind there, the door, yeah. just behind the doors. Yeah. And she's peeping through yeah. all those, uh, you know, yeah. doors. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you're not allowed. Yeah, right. There okay, are cultural constraints. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, let's, uh, you know, we have to work. Yeah, with what we, you know, through the, the system, culture, you know. Sure, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, we don't want to spoil. Yes. Okay. Well, let's be back here sharp at nine yes. o'clock. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful now. Yeah. Steve, don't be impatient. Okay. <laughs> Wait for just one more night. Yeah. After having waited for 17 years, <laughs> tomorrow morning, yeah. God willing. Uh -huh. Your wish will come true. After all these years, Steve must wait till tomorrow to see Alam Bibi, perhaps the woman behind those eyes. To ease his mind, he takes a late night walk through the old city. Assalamu alaikum. I always love to get a shave when I come to the shower because they, after the shave, they'll give you a wonderful head massage. So he's been shaving since he was, what, 11? Despite the head massage, Steve is still anxious. He cannot escape the image of the Afghan girl. Can you give me a special price on that? Okay, 50 more for your discount. <laughs> Do you know why I want you to give me a special price? This one, this one is the local price. Huh? But you're, I'm the one who photographed her. I'm the photographer. <laughs> you see the name here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve McCurry? It is for you, 80 rupees. 80 rupees. <laughs> You're going to give me 20 rupees discount because it's a, oh, that's very kind of you. are very generous. It's the end of a long day. Tomorrow, he hopes to be one step closer to finding the Afghan girl. I didn't get much sleep last night because um, the anticipation is, uh, is, is, is a bit much, but um, I'm hoping that uh, all goes well. The following morning, Steve sets out early. He's waited over 17 years for this moment. During the night, Rahi Muller received word that Alam Bibi's husband has granted Steve permission to meet her. So he's the husband oh, okay. Oh, okay. Good, good. of the lady. Okay, great. Well, just tell them that we're very happy to meet them and happy that they allow us to come into their home and meet the family. I think we can just sit there okay. and wait for her. Okay, great. Okay. 